It's wonderful to see you, Jampa. Um, Likewise, Howard. Thank you for uh, writing a novel of the rarest originality, um, this concerto of 46 movements, each so full of emotion as your narrator, a woman about your own age, wanders her neighborhood and her city. Your narrator goes unnamed, her city is unnamed. Many of the friendships and incidents of her life are offered in just a few sentences. But what I think beautifully applies to the way you have composed whereabouts is what Eugenio Montale wrote. And he wrote, in the unnamed is the universal. If you focus well on how a woman opens her umbrella, you don't even need to desire rain. So I'd be grateful if you would read in Italian and in English the one page chapter, Nowhere, and then we'll come back and talk. Certainly, thank you. Uh, thank you, Howard. And thank you to, to thanks to everybody who's who's out there, and uh, and of course to the ninety second Street Y for having us this evening. So I'll read the Italian text first. It's called Da nessuna parte. Perché alla fine l'ambientazione non c'entra nulla. Lo spazio fisico, la luce, le pareti. Non importa che sia sotto un cielo o sotto la pioggia o nell'acqua limpida in estate, in treno o in macchina, sull'aereo, tra le nuvole, sconnesse, sparse come un branco di meduse. Altro che ferma, sono sempre e soltanto in movimento, in attesa o di arrivare o di rientrare, oppure di andare via. Una piccola valigia ai piedi da fare, da disfare, la borsa in grembo, qualche soldo, in li un libro infilato lì dentro. Esiste un posto dove non siamo di passaggio? Disorientata, persa, sbalestrata, sballata, sbandata, scombussolata, smarrita, spaesata, spiantata, stranita. In questa parentela di termini mi ritrovo. Ecco la dimora, le parole che mi mettono al mondo. And in English, nowhere. Because when all is said and done, the setting doesn't matter. The space, the walls, the light. It makes no difference whether I'm under a clear blue sky or caught in the rain or swimming in the transparent sea in summer. I could be riding a train or traveling by car or flying in a plane among the clouds that drift and spread on all sides like a massive jellyfish in the air. I've never stayed still. I've always been moving. That's all I've been doing. Always waiting either to get somewhere or to come back or to escape. I keep packing and unpacking the small suitcase at my feet. I hold my purse in my lap. It's got some money and a book to read. Is there any place we're not moving through? Disoriented, lost, at sea, at odds, astray, adrift, bewildered, confused, uprooted, turned around. I'm related to these related terms. These words are my abode, my only foothold. Um, when, uh, when, when Milan, Milan Kundera was asked what it was like to write his recent novel in French and translate it into Czech. He said, quote, the French language felt like my destination and my fate. If you are only the translator of a novel, you have no claims on authorship. But if you are the writer and the translator, you have a kind of double claim on authorship. And with that comes a whole different knowledge and level of regard for what the sheer possibilities of a writing life can be. In other words, a kind of new freedom. And that word freedom struck me as pr particularly deep chords, Jumpa, because it uh, seems to me that I could ask 
do you recognize in your own experience with whereabouts, which you wrote in Italian and translated yourself, um, a very essential kind of freedom that you hadn't experienced before? And I, I know perhaps you've talked about this in things that I haven't quite read um, yet. And uh, you have this lovely um, essay on self-translation, which I highly recommend to everyone. But I've wanted to ask you this question because I think that word freedom just is so uh, provocative here. And so if you could speak to that for a moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's freedom is a big, big word. Uh, and, and, and there is freedom uh, on so many levels, uh, but there is also constraint. And it's and it's both things, right? And and you, uh, Howard, who who uh, you were such a generous and intelligent reader of, of in other words, the first uh, Italian um, experiment. Um, uh, I think uh, already um, understood uh, sort of what what um, what I was trying to get at, and 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 to. Uh, redefine in some sense um, what writing uh, can be, can be for me, uh, redefine what, uh, how I think of myself as a, as a writer, uh, things like authorship, you know, the idea of authorship, the idea of something being original as opposed to um, uh, deriving from the original. Uh, today in my translation class, at Princeton, we talked about these words, uh, these enormous words, uh, original versus, you know, wow, really? what what derives from the original, um, what is what what descends from the from the original, and and what how that conditions us to think of, uh, to regard literature and translation, you know, um, and to work against that, to work against those uh, those uh, assumptions. Um, but 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 to 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 answer your question, uh, to hope hoping to answer your question, I think it it really is about the the tension between the freedom I have felt uh, working in 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 Italian, um, uh, complicating my relationship to English as a result. Now that I'm making a journey uh, back into English through Italian. Um, but but also the the obvious limitations that 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 come into play, um, in terms of uh, my my point of entry in, into Italian and how I can express myself in a language I really have uh, come to feel um, at at home in paradoxically at home in uh, at at quite a late uh, relatively late stage in my development as a person and as a as a writer. The um, you know my feelings about in other words, and I and I keep thinking, you know, um, my fantasy is that the essays you're writing now about translation, about self-translation, in a sense, are uh, perhaps an extension of that book in some way. It's 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 because it's autobiographical, mm -hmm. but you know. Before we get on to your, I'd like to hear more about your translation class, like for instance, how many languages you're working with, mm. but we can, we can get to that in a minute. But I wanted to talk um, about, about the humor in, in whereabouts. I'm sorry about the phone, Jumpa. Um, okay. the, the humor in whereabouts, I, I, as, as you know, it, it's, it's got tremendous humor. Um, for one thing, I love your narrator's judgments of hotel rooms. They are important locations for her. The hotel rooms, uh, or almost every day, she goes through a kind of struggle between um, stasis and action or engagement in the world. And your character, uh, you know, Elsa Morante put it better. She said, between daydreaming, you have purchased a ticket and actually getting on the train. And I really feel that about your character, that every day, or every day she chronicles, I should say, there's that tension. And through consecutive readings of whereabouts, um, 
I started to think of your narrator as someone who might say of herself what a Margaret Dura character said, I am amused by my own torments. And I especially began to love where her mind instinctually went and how she was the kind of elegist of any random encounter. For instance, when she sees a young couple madly in love who are looking over an array of suitcases, she thinks, and I'm quoting you here, it's probably the first time they're going away together, maybe also the last. Will they come to the conclusion after spending three days together in a hotel that they're really not so in love? Well, yes, it's a sad thought, but it's also quite funny that her mind reflexively goes to these places without um, putting your care, your narrator on the psychoanalyst couch, Jumpa. Maybe uh, I wondered if she is a woman who just keeps apprenticing herself to her own laconic instincts, or is she someone who actually finds deep gratification in her gift of seeing everywhere she looks a kind of melancholic reality? Because her descriptions create the atmosphere for us as a reader. I mean, I think both things would be very enviable. I suppose what I'm asking is, did she turn out to be who you originally imagined her? Or did her humor and her suffering and her honesty slowly unfold chapter by chapter? And perhaps also, which of these traits that she has prodigiously um, might have surprised you the most in the writing of, of this book? That's a lot, I know. And there's mysteries of language involved here, but whatever you want to say, I'd love to hear. Well, I mean, she did, she did unfold. I didn't know who she was in the beginning. I glimpsed her uh, as she glimpses people. Um, mm -hmm. And, and so I glimpsed her in my head and, and I wrote down a bit of her and then um, that bit led to another bit and 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 so on um because i i really didn't know why she was reacting the way she was reacting in the first scene the first scene i wrote the first the first episode if you will i wrote in uh, um is actually the last to appear in the in the novel uh it's it's the the chapter called uh, on the train and and so i saw her on a train i saw her sitting on a train and i saw her witnessing a scene and reacting to it and reflecting on it uh, and being marked by it. And, and, and I wondered why she felt as she did. Um, so then I kept putting her into different, different places, uh, different settings to see how she would react. And she would react in, in you know, a, a, as the scenes grew um, in a variety of ways because she's a, she's a variety of things. She's uh, like 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 all of us, you know. She's uh, she's contradictory, and she's, um, but but I think that what she is all the time is fiercely attached to life, um, which is um, which I think is important because I I think there's a way um, to read this novel and to think, oh, here's this very detached character. She's very detached. She's very alone. She's very detached. Um, I don't see her that way. Oh, completely the opposite. Yeah, I see her. I see her uh, as the opposite. I see her as in so deeply attached to to life, and I and I think in that sense, you know, um, like the writer, uh, you know, uh, you know, there is there is this tension that we must maintain between uh, a sort of hopeless devotion to life. In all of its particulars, and the 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 necessity of also pulling back in order to be able to understand, to perceive, and to recreate that feeling, those emotional attachments that we have to very simple things that we encounter and that we witness, and because we witness them, doesn't mean that we are passively experiencing them. I don't believe that. I believe that watching and absorbing. And witnessing, you are also a player, you know. And I think the book is looking at 
you know, she is she is experiencing her own role in in her day in her life uh, in these very different ways. You know, different ways. Sometimes she's center stage. Sometimes she's sort of peering from behind the curtain. Sometimes she's um, playing multiple roles. Sometimes she feels. Um, I mean, I think the whole the whole book for me, what I what I what I understood after I wrote the book, is of course we don't understand anything as we're writing a book. Um, but what I what I what I understood when I stepped away from the book um, was that everything was the the, the central dialogue was one between uh, presence and absence, and in, and a very basic presence and absence yes. on the earth, and she's she's thinking about what it means to 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 pass through life uh, for all of us to pass through life. Um, I, I think this is what I was trying to, uh, in hindsight, uh, what, what I was trying to, to, to see through her. And, um, and I think one of the things that did emerge was her, um, was her humor, were her petty judgments at times, was her, was her, um, was her pettiness. Sometimes she's quite petty and ungenerous. Um, uh, I was I was um, surprised by that, but that was that was a part of her. That was a part of her uh, alongside um, the parts of her that that marvel, the parts of her that ache, the parts of her that uh, that 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 stoically bear uh, bear painful uh, experiences. You know, um, the intimacy of of the book, though, Jumpa, is as if being a diarist on our behalf. I mean, there is that sense of um, the privateness of observation. And if you say you were surprised at something, uh, surprise is discovery. So when you were writing, and it's amazing to hear that the first thing you wrote was the last in the book, but uh, that once you discovered something in a vignette, say, or one of the chapters, then the question is, do you consciously, you know, uh, make that part of her again and again throughout the book? Mm -hmm. And that's just the, the biography of any book is filled with uh, scenes like that. But I, humor for me was simply like a person who doesn't know they're funny, mm. but they are very funny all the time. In second or third reading, I found that more and more about her. And maybe the pettiness, maybe, maybe humor is resident in that pe pettiness in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but the pettiness still allowed her very precise observations. You know, and I, this is just, it was just, just great. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad that the humor um, emerged for, for you because I do think it's, there's, there's a sort of absurd, um, edge to her, and she's she can be quite uh, ironic. She can be, um, you know, she 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 isn't just um, one way. Uh, and and I, I think I'll um, I'll share with you a, a really helpful image that a friend of mine, uh, an Italian writer friend of mine, gave me. Um, sort of when I was at about about a halfway mark with this with this project. I didn't really know what it was going to be. It was very different. It was radically different from uh, how other other uh, projects had been born, uh, whether they were stories or novels. Um, the, this novel was 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 emerging in these very brief um, episodes. And I when I had about maybe half of them, I showed them to a, a friend. Um, a writer named Chiara Mitsalama, and I remember we we met uh, in Rome, and she had read, you know, um, a sheaf of pages over the summer, and then we saw each other, and she she said, um, "I feel as if I, when I'm reading this um, material, that um, I'm in a dark room, and there's a big chandelier in the middle, uh, suspended from the ceiling, and every now and then you come and you light a candle." And, and as you do that with each of these chapters, I'm seeing the shape of the chandelier. And, uh, but, but I, and she said, but I think there's still, 
you know, layers and, 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 and um, sort of an arrangement that, um, that's still emerging. That, and she said, that's my sense of, of what you're doing. And that was so extraordinarily helpful to me because then I began to understand that this would be a way for me to actually give shape to the thing because it was a bit shapeless and I didn't know the order of any of these episodes. I didn't know that the, that chapter on the train would come at the end or the first chapter would be the first. I, I didn't understand um, any of that. Uh, but I, I kept thinking about that idea of sort of lighting a candle one after the other and then eventually the thing ideally lights up and there's a you see the shape and you see the layers and the the the, the rings around you know the, the the various rings around a center and um so that was that was something that i found really really that's, that's really interesting yeah. i mean you know i feel you know when people who are so familiar with your novels come to this novel they are will immediately recognize a, a profoundly different reading experience. It can't be helped. And one thing, of course, is that you wrote it in Italian and translated it yourself. But for me, um, it's a difficult thing to, to articulate, Jumpa, but for me, in its syntax, in its interior music, in its laconic temperament at times, um, and just correct me if I'm wrong here, it feels to me like a novel, I can't really imagine you having uh, written in English. I no. just feel like it's, a, it, and, and so my question is, did writing this novel in Italian and how did it allow you to draw readers so deeply into um, a woman's solitude because she, does experience it that, but also somehow allow you a more intuitive access to your own nature as a writer. And I think they seem to be related. And it's very presumptuous of me to say that I can't imagine you writing this not in Italian, but it's just the feeling I had when I was reading it. I, you, you're right. I, I would never have. Um, people have asked, you know, well, what would this novel have been like were it written in English? And it, well, it would asked. would never have been written in in English. And I, I mean, the thing is, I'm writing in Italian because I'm hearing different music in Italian. I'm hearing a different language, different words, and a different music and a different reality. Yes. that I'm that I cannot access with with English yes. and and it doesn't make it uh, better or worse or or I mean it's not about that it's just that it's different and the, the and the and the fact that it's somehow the the music I'm hearing now uh, and partly that that it's new and also that it's there that it it creates somehow uh, Paradoxically, um, it it enables me to uh, explore uh, uh, ideas, feelings, um, impressions, um, parts of myself that um, that that are still buried. You know, I mean, if we think of our work as writers, as as constantly sort of this 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 excavation, right, over time of of, of who we are and who we might have been and and who we've forgotten we were or who we will never be and and this you know but and we when we keep doing this through language um but the but the italian has 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 just put down it just has gone down somehow uh deeper and more quickly um and and so now there it's it's hit something it's hit something inside of me that um that is yielding this work, right? It's yielding this work, and I and I think what's interesting is that the deeper I go in the Italian, um, what's happening now is that um, it's it's actually becoming become an instrument um, to explore my past, which is 
really interesting because in my past, there was no Italian, right? In my past, right, yeah. Italian didn't exist in, inside of me. Um, and so that, that is, has been, and, and that comes after, um, uh, after, um, but not entirely though, not entirely though, because there are impressions, um, you know, that I think I am trying to channel. Um, I mean, the character has a, a childhood, right? So then I have to think about, you know, what was it like to be a child? What would this person's childhood have been like? Uh, what might it have been like? And so there, there, there's, um, there's a way to open that door uh, to the past uh, in a language that, that, that has, you know, very much, you know, it goes this way, this way, this is all very disorienting, this p platform, I can't I know. seem to control what I'm seeing I, on the screen. Um, and yet, and yet it's going the other way. You know, the, the, I mean, the language is, is, is an arrow pointing in my head, rationally pointing forward, whereas it's actually leading me backward, right? So, and then if you think, well, Italian isn't, people say Italian isn't your language, it's another language, it's another, it's another, you know, it's a learned language, it's an acquired language and so on and so forth. Um, but it's in that very borrowing, it's in that very act of borrowing a language that I possess it in a yeah. way that you aren't aware that you possess things that are actually yours. I am so acutely aware of the books I borrowed from the library right now in my study, if I look at them. I'm deeply aware of the books I borrowed from the Princeton Library. Um, <laughs> the other libraries that are mine that I own, I have a different relationship to, right? They're just there, they're mine, uh, quote unquote, mine. Um, you know, I so, love, I'm sorry, please. Go yeah, ahead. no, I mean, so that's, 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 the, that's the idea of, 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 of being, it's, it's, the, it's the awareness, I think. Yeah. I it's love the, it. It's the awareness of the fact that it's, that it's borrowed. Um, but then you have to ask yourself, what is mine anyway? What is mine and what is borrowed? What, I mean, yes, technically, I know some of these books have to go back to the library because otherwise I will get a fine and a note. Um, <laughs> but these other books that I, I quote unquote, own you know i mean they they'll they'll go somewhere <laughs> they'll end up somewhere that isn't mine in the end you know, i was thinking though you know i don't want to trespass on your private life but i was thinking you've been shuttling back and forth between italy and america and it just occurred to me as you were talking jumpa that the jarring quality of leaving uh, an immersion in a language is one thing, but the jarring quality of leaving the writing of a book in a language is another. And Calvino, you know, famously said that every book has its own biography. Mm. And I know that this is thing; these are things you're writing about. Uh, but you know, I was listening to you, and I was thinking that is part of the experience of 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 whereabouts that and i believe and, and again correct me if i'm wrong i believe you did much of the translation in princeton all of it all of it okay mm -hmm. so so that would imply a, that would require a kind of um displacement of the imagination in a sense because mm -hmm. here you are here surrounded by english and then having to remember um, the the streets of this unnamed city, which may or may not be <laughs> Rome, um, and and so I don't know if you can talk a, a moment about this, and I hadn't intended to ask you, but um, about that the sort of biography of this book, not so much chronologically, but maybe the emotional dimensions of it, this shuttling back and forth. Mm -hmm. You have people you speak Italian with, I'm assuming, all the time here. Yes. But still, in a room by yourself writing and translating, um, that must have required something, uh, a deep devotion 
to stay with it day by day. Um, so there's about eight questions in what I've just said, but you know, I'm interested in the back and forthness, mm -hmm. not just between the languages, but almost demographically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the entire book, I think the whole book was born because when I started writing it in the winter of 2015, when I was living in Rome, I was That's finishing right. the, the, the third year uh, consecutively of, of living there, the, f the first sort of chapter of, of, of my mm. time there. And, um, and I knew I was coming back to the United States and I was, um, I was quite anguished about it. Uh, I didn't want to come back. I was mm. very happy there and I had found, uh, I had found happiness, real happiness there. And, um, and, and, and so I, I think it was that awareness of somebody, um, you know, just that, that, that sense of being in a place and not being in a place at the same time, that, that sort of, you know, you're on the threshold as it were, um, that, that, that reality, that, uh, emotion, uh, I think gave rise to, um, um, the spirit, the, the climate of the, of, of the, the sort of, um, microclimate uh, uh, of this uh, book and of the, of the character. And, and what happened was, uh, though I, I wrote the, you know, the, the beginning um, bits of it in, in Rome uh, while I was still there, um, I wrote most of it, almost all of it on return visits to Rome. So I never, um, it, it would lie dormant. I would take this notebook back and forth, back and forth on ev every time I went back to Rome which really? was quite often, I would just take the notebook and I would put it in my carry-on uh, and put, you know, and travel with it on the plane. And then I would get to my apartment on the other side and, um, and, 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 and I would start working on it again. And I would, uh, but, but, but back then, especially back then, um, it was because um, I couldn't hear the language any other way. I had to be there, right? I had to be there. I had to be back in the environment um, in an environment in which Italian was, 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 was very much the dominant language, um, of my everyday. And, um, and that was how the book was written. That was how, um, almost in, the entire book was written. I think I maybe, um, revised a couple of, of the sections here at a much later stage, um, but I remember people were, were reading it when I was here as well. You know, I remember at one point I showed, showed a portion of it to, to Domenico Sternone, my, my friend and the great writer, because he was here in, at Georgetown. So I remember I sent it to him um, and he came to that event, Howard, um, when, you were, you, when you saw me last. And, um, and, uh, and so I, you know, I was so aware of, of sort of associating the writing with place. Um, and I also knew conversely that to translate it, I had to leave Rome. And so I came back to Princeton a year after the book was published in Italy and I started to translate it. And I did feel, I was very aware that it was a way, I mean, I think translation, because I translate out of Italian, um, whether it's my own work or, or, or the work of somebody else, it is always a way for me to um, cope with exile, I say in this, this essay I recently wrote. It's a way to, um, to, 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 create, to, to, to create the illusion that, that the distance isn't there, that, the, that, the, that I'm not so far away. Um, and, and so I remember especially, I think the most meaningful time I spent with this book with whereabouts uh, in English was certainly uh, this past fall during the pandemic when I was reviewing the, um, you know, sort of the looking at the revisions of the of the translation, and I was I was I was doing that in a in an abandoned uh, Firestone Library at Princeton with, with all sorts of regulations and you know booking your table and masks and everything wiped and hardly anybody. In, in a library that, you know, um, is usually overflowing with students and, um, and, and, and knowing that, um, you know, 
things were so complicated all over the world and who, who knew when I would be able to get back to Rome. I haven't been back since the fall, in fact. And, um, and, and, and so to, to, to go back, to be able to go back and to recreate, uh, to re-see, revise, you know, literally to re-see the, the book uh, in another language uh, in, in, and, and certain um, uh, aspects of the book, um, which are very much, um, you know, portraits of, 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 of a very specific city, though I, I, I don't name it. You don't name it, but, you know, it, it's fascinating to hear because also when you think about the fact that you're translating a friend's, dear friend's book, books, I'm sorry. I think you've done three. You're, yes. about, you're about to publish a fourth. No, three. I've done two. Have uh, this is Sarnone, so two have been published, uh, ties and trick, and yeah. uh, now I just finished. I translated uh, the third, which will be called Trust, uh, uh, last spring during the, the during the initial um, let's call it phase one of the of the pandemic. Um, and where I translated are, it. And are there were there are there conversations with him throughout this uh for the third one i know i did i surprised him i i didn't tell him <laughs> i was going to translate it actually really? i mean he he had he had said he had asked me and i said oh i gosh i don't know i things are you know i have so many things going on this that the other thing let me see um and and then i realized i this was my lifeline translating that novel, um, oh. Confidenza, it's called in Italian. I realized uh, this, was going to, this was going to keep me sane and this was going to keep me uh, firmly grounded in Italian day after day in a moment when uh, we were all so terribly grounded. Um, you know, my son was studying in, in Rome last year and he, he had, you know, we had to uh, arrange for him to come back, the school shut down, this, that, the other thing. So, um, you know, it, it was a very intense time. Um, certainly not as intense and terrible as, as, as so many people have, um, had to bear and experience. Um, and I realized we were extremely fortunate and have been very, uh, extremely fortunate throughout the pandemic, um, in that sense. In any case, it was, it was, um, it was different and it was strange and, uh, and and um, and traumatic in its own way, and and so I, uh, I translated, I translated the novel, um, and I told him only when I was done. I said, right? uh, "I have to tell you something," and um, and, and he, was, he was he was happy. He was happy. There, he's just such a powerful writer. I can't wait for this new one. But it does expand one's sense of the, your full immersion into translation it, it itself um you know i know that um your uh roman stories are uh you wrote in italian new stories or recent stories i i don't know over what uh period of time you wrote those shumpa but um you're translating them i think so i've translated a couple and um there, there are nine of them, and yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and and uh, they're just uh, um, they're well, you being. Clearly, you clearly name the city this time. I do, I do. <laughs> I come right out and say it. I, I, well, I mean, it's after Moravia, you know, his famous Racconti yeah. Romani. Uh, they, they, he gave me the the inspiration um, wow. for for my project. I thought, you know, his his portrait of Rome in short stories, you know, in the 1950s, um, they're, they're, they're just, uh, it's, 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 it's a, it's a masterpiece, you know, and, uh, and an extraordinary, um, account, uh, of that city that in, in, in across these glimpses, snapshots, characters, one after another, um, my project is much more modest. He wrote, you know, volumes of, of racconti romani. Um, mine, mine is a, a, a of a, a, you know, 
small on a smaller scale, but um, but I wanted to write my own racconti romani. I wanted to write my own Roman Roman stories or Roman tales, um, and I um, he was such an important writer for me in the in the beginning uh, when I was when I was first working in in Italian. Um, so in a way, it's just a way to pay tribute to him. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know. I don't know if I'll translate them all. Um, but I think I'll translate at least some, and it might be interesting this time to work with another person to maybe work to collaborate on a couple of them to translate a, if some of them myself. Um, it really just depends on you know. Um, with with each of these Italian books, I've now with across the with I mean the first in Altre Parole was translated by Anne Goldstein into another words, the clothing of books um, was translated by my husband. And then whereabouts I translated myself. And um, so, so we'll see what happens in the end with the, you uh, said that, um, with the Roman stories. But you did mention that, uh, um, I'm paraphrasing here that the, uh, you were talking about the sentences of the new stories and relative to whereabouts, how they're actually written and you said the sentences are um, elaborated, I believe you said, elaborated in different ways. And so I want to ask about that, but also um, if you care to read something from uh, one of the news stories. Sure, yeah, I, I, I'd be happy to share this. Um translation in progress at, um, you know, today I, nice to hear it. yeah, I, I taught, um, and, and my, you know, my students had to share their translations in progress. So, um, and I, I too am, a, a, a you know, forever a student when it comes to so many things. Um, so this is very much in progress. How many languages um, are you working with in, in the workshop? Um, well, this is a this is a class. This this semester, I'm teaching a course in which people can have any language, and we work. We focus on English, right? So we we look at everything. We value everything in English, um, and it's up to the to the student to be sort of the ambassador for that for that language and explain it to us and read us read read us excerpts from the language, talk about the, the talk about the language, talk about challenges that language poses. So. Um, so this semester I have, what do I have? I have, um, I have Korean, I have Chinese, I have Japanese, I have French, I have Spanish, um, and I have Hindi. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, nice mix, very nice mix. That is a great mix. Mm -hmm. I have something to ask you after this reading, but please go ahead and thank you. Sure, okay, so here goes, I just, scribble this down. Um, in the city where water stained all that it touched, I'd see when I was doing the dishes how the faucet and the sink and even the glasses barely rinsed and dried would be stained with a cloudy mold, and this irritated me. My husband had explained that it was the lime that left those ghostly traces, which required vinegar, a vinegar wash, or half a lemon rubbed over the surface to bring back the shine. He'd learned that trick because one of his first jobs before he worked at the butcher's was in the kitchen of a trattoria where he'd learned to make a series of foreign dishes to drain the pasta at just the right moment and make the chicoria leap in the pan. At the end of the evening, when the owner, who was also the cook, sat exhausted at a table with a glass of mirto to chat with some of the regulars, it was my husband's job to wipe down the kitchen and leave it spotless for the owner's mother who lived above the restaurant and came down to prepare the tarts in the early morning calm. Here, yes, I can hear the difference. Thank you, that was beautiful. Um, so this is a very um, intimate thing that you said recently and I, I don't know where it was. It may have been in something somebody sent me um, and a very provocative thing I, I felt. You said about whereabouts that it was a book that you feel toward it um, a certain level of acceptance. I believe that was your phrase. If I've got that wrong, 
please tell me. No, it's, a, it's a right. A level of acceptance that I hadn't felt, that you hadn't felt for mm -hmm. your previous novels. Mm -hmm. and that, that strikes me, Jumpa, um, as a, a very profound thing to say in terms of a writing life, because uh, you write something new, like this book, uh, published in Italy, I believe in 2018, and just out here now. And, 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 but you're really reflecting as well on the previous books, not in a comparative way, but in, a, in an emotional way. And so I wonder if you could just speak for a moment before we maybe stop this conversation or edge into something else and talk about that, that word acceptance, mm -hmm. because um, it's, it's, it's very provocative word here. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what I was getting at is that, you know, because I translated this book, um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's really, um, you, you, have to, you have to make it again, and you have to make the same thing again. Um, I'd never done that before. I'd never had to do that before. And I, I've always just kind of, you know, it's like the, the, you, you shed it, and you write it, and you have to um shed it um to to move on and and to develop uh the new book um and 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 the new skin um and and so this was the first time that uh i i really was um you know uh I, I, it was necessary to go back inside of every single word uh and every sentence that i had put together every thought every image, all of it, um, and, 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 and make it again. And, and so I think, you know, the, regardless of what the book is or how successful or unsuccessful it is, I think there's a level of acceptance because of that repeated, that repeat, you know, that return to it. Um, that that I that I haven't had with any of the other books. The other books, you know, you write them. I've written them, and I've sort of, you know, I said, okay, well, that's that, and now, 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 the next thing, and, um, and 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 I think that um, they 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 exist. They sort of float around me as these these books that I produced um, in the past, uh, but but there's still a there, there's a sense of because be, it, what the what the what the translation created um, was actually just uh, it created it it made it it gave the book roots inside of me um, that are what they are you know that that it's a sense of I did this I really wrote this um, and I know I wrote it because I had to stare at every piece of it uh, all over again and. And 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 be able to rewrite it um, to give it life again in 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 the English language um, without making it better or stronger or uh, you know changing things um, in any significant way and that's the acceptance right because the danger of, of self-translation and what everybody warned me against was oh well, as soon as you get back in there you're going to start the, you know you're going to see this and oh i should have you know had this this scene could have gone that way or oh this character could have you know said these three extra lines and this could have been more you know i mean it's that 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 impulse we all have to uh, of course, to 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 better what we did to improve, and that's normally why we go on to write other books, right? Is to 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 figure it out better, to get it a little, to get a little bit closer, to 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 draw it a little bit more sharply, uh, or 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 loosely, or whatever you need to do, because you're never, well, I'm never satisfied with anything, right? And 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 I think that's normal because that's the drive to keep writing. Uh, because we're trying to get at something, and we keep trying to get at it through across all the, these books, right? Um, and 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 so that's that's what I'm talking about. It's that it's that acceptance of um, 
of, of what it is. Um, and, and that's a new feeling for me, you know, it, it's a new, uh, awareness and, um, and, and, and certainly a new, you know, a, a, a different form of, of closeness to the book a, as well, because I've lived it in, 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 in these two, in these two languages. It's, um, well, Jumpa, um, I love you and I love this book and um, I wish it all great good fortunes and it's been such a pleasure to talk with you. Um, I guess not on the phone, we're here in person in a way and uh, just so glad we had a chance to talk. I don't know if Bernard's going to come in now or not, but we'll be in touch, you and I. Yes, thank you, Howard. This was a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Um, For me too. I really appreciate I, it. I, I, I did as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>